So you might have needed to unlock a drone for an operation when flying inside a controlled airspace. Now this is simple enough if you're flying a drone like a Mini that's under 249 grams by simply ticking a few boxes on your controller and entering a code sent to your phone and you're pretty much good to go. But what if you are in restricted airspace and using a drone above 249 grams? How do you unlock the drone even if you go through the whole process about getting the approval? Well, in this video, I'll take you through step by step how to submit and get approval for flying in those restricted areas. Even if you haven't needed to do this yet, it is useful to know for future operations. So one of the first things you're going to have to do is request the approval via an application to your country's governing aviation body to fly in those restricted areas. Now, as every requirement and submission is different for different countries, I won't be able to cover that here, but once you have the approval, you'll get this document, which is called an instrument. Now, this gives your company an official and legal ability to operate a drone under the specific guidelines outlined in it. So as you can see here, this is the approval and permission to operate an RPA within three nautical miles of a controlled airspace Space, as well as within the approach and departure path of that aerodrome, as that's exactly where a specific area of our project is located. The other important elements outlined in this are the duration period of the instrument, so how long we can fly in that area, as well as the restrictions placed on the operation itself when it comes to the AGL, or how high the drone can fly. Now, these will be important a little later on. Now, after all the hours, not to mention costs of creating and submitting the applications and waiting sometimes up to a month for the application to come through, once you have that piece of paper, there are still a few further steps that you need to take to actually allow your drone to operate in those restricted areas. Once you get the approval, it doesn't somehow magically allow you to fly. And that brings us to DJI FlySafe. And DJI FlySafe is the website that some of you might be familiar with already, but if not, this is the hub for all of your advanced geo unlocking requirements. So first you'll need to log in using a registered DJI account. And if this is your first time trying to unlock a geo zone, you'll first need to add your background information as well. Now, if you are representing a company, there is an option to upload some supporting documentation that gives you authority over the account for faster approvals in more restricted areas. So this is usually reserved for organizations like police, fire, search and rescue. So don't worry if you attempt this and get rejected, it's not necessary in order to have an application approved. Next is device management. And this is where you add any drones that will be flying the operation in the area you're wanting to geo unlock. Now, the most important thing you need here is the flight controller serial number. And that can be found here in the Pilot 2 app if you're using an enterprise drone or here in the DJI Fly app. Simply click here to add the new device, add the flight serial number, select the aircraft model and give it a name for you to recognize easily. Now, if you have a lot of drones in your fleet and want to add all of them to this, you can also upload an Excel file to automatically add these. Just make sure to use the example template supplied. Now on to pilot management, and this is where you can add the details of who will be flying the drones in the unlocked area. Simply click on new pilot and add in the details. Just make sure that the pilot also has a registered DJI account and will also be logging into the controller with that same DJI account when going to unlock the GeoZone when on site of the operation. So you've added your drones and pilots, now it's time to submit your unlock request. First, click on new unlock request and accept the terms and conditions. Now you'll be greeted with two options and the one you select is dependent on where the unlock area is you're wanting to get access to. If you're within three nautical miles but not in any of the restricted areas, there is a good chance that all you need to do is a zone unlocking. So once you select that, simply select the drones that will be flying in the area, add in the pilot and click next. Now search for the aerodrome you're looking to get approval for and you will see the different zones to unlock. Red means it's restricted and you need specific permission, like the instrument issued from a governing body. 
grey is an altitude zone, which means you can fly, however your AGL will be limited. Usually that's around 30 to 60 metres. And blue is an authorization zone, essentially meaning you should be granted permission automatically so long as you filled out all of your drone and pilot's details correctly. So I won't do it here, but generally if you select either the blue or gray areas and submit, you should automatically gain approval to fly in those areas. But now let's dive into unlocking the restricted areas. Now, if you attempt a zone unlocking in red, unless you are an authorized organization like police or fire and rescue, like I mentioned before, your application most likely will be rejected. So instead, you'll want to select custom unlocking. So go through the same process, adding the drones and pilots who will be operating in the area, then search for the aerodrome area you're wanting to unlock. Now in this case, we're inspecting residential power lines. And as you can see, these are very close to the arrival and departure areas, which is the reason for requiring our instrument. But I'm also going to use this map to outline the specific areas I want our drones to be able to fly in. Now before I select, the other important thing to note is that because we are so close, always use the polygon tool to mark out your specific flight area instead of the circle, otherwise your application may be denied. This is just to ensure you are being specific to your flight parameters. Once the area is clearly marked out, name it something that you can easily reference to later. Now once that's done, you will need to enter in the duration of the unlock period. Now this should match your instrument. So for example, ours is from the 9th of July to the 31st of October. So that's the date range we put in. Next and most importantly is the altitude. And again, this is the altitude approved via your application and it will be on your instrument. Now this is important as if it is different to your instrument the application will be denied and also just as important is your drone will be limited to this altitude when flying in those unlocked areas. Next, place a reason for the application. Now this doesn't need to be too detailed, but just know that for these advanced applications, a human will be reviewing this. So just make sure that the reason is clear. Now lastly, you will need to upload your instrument from your governing aviation body for the permission and approval to fly in this area to just show that you've gone through the correct channels. Now once that's done, all that's left is to submit and wait. Now this can happen pretty quickly and we usually get feedback anywhere from five minutes to 30 minutes whether the submission has been rejected or approved and you will receive an email regardless. If rejected there is usually an explanation for you to tweak your submission and try again. So the last thing you're going to need to do is once that approval does come through you're going to need to transfer that unlock to your drone's controller. Firstly, make sure the drone and controller you are using is the one that was registered on the DJI FlySafe website. As you can see, we're in a restricted zone with takeoff prohibited. So step one, make sure your controller is connected to some form of Wi-Fi like a phone hotspot so it can connect to the DJI FlySafe server. Next, click on the user icon on the top left and make sure the controller is logged in with a registered DJI account and is one of the pilots added on the DJI FlySafe site. Then go to GeoZone Unlocking at the bottom and here you can import all the new certificates approved for this device. If you have multiple sites approved, these can be batch imported. Click on the new unlocking packages and then import these to the controller. The eligible certificates can now be toggled on the right hand side. Just note that only one can be toggled at any one time. And if you have multiple certificates, you can click into the certificate to get more details about the location to double check you're unlocking the right area. So simply press one, accept the terms and conditions to get access to fly in that restricted area. Once you attempt to launch the drone, you will then get one last prompt about flying in a restricted area and simply enable the unlocking license by again selecting the boxes and enable the unlock license. And there you go, you can now fly in a restricted airspace. Just remember your drone's AGL will be restricted to what has been approved in your application. Now aside from the unlocking of the drone, there are a couple of requirements you need to do, especially when flying in restricted areas. So make sure to issue a NOTAM no less than 24 hours before your operation. 
Make sure you call air traffic control of that airspace before you commence and after you have finished your operation. And always monitor the airspace with an airband like an ICOM radio to listen out for any relevant broadcasts of aircraft entering the airspace. Okay guys, I hope you learned something new about flying in restricted airspace. Really the hardest part of this whole process is getting that approval from your governing aviation body. Everything after that is relatively straightforward. And don't forget to check out our Drone Masterclass Academy in the links below where we have more tips, tutorials, and extended job shadows. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.